Hi there, so um, this is a look at a Project Anarchy game, a work in progress, that's uh, currently called RTS because it has some elements of a real-time strategy game, but it's not actually really a real-time strategy game. It's got a few elements of first-person shooters, it's got a few elements of real-time strategy and RPGs all kind of built into one. But the premise is, is that you, instead of controlling one character like you might do in a game, you're actually going to control two. Um, so that's what these two guys are here. These are the two Charlies that I've borrowed from Project Charlie. And uh, these boxes that are next to them represent the weapons they would be holding, but I've got this actually no real finished graphics for this. Anymore. So um, this guy, he's got a pistol with six bullets in it, and there's his health, and the other guy's got uh, rockets, and he, he isn't loaded at all. So um, each character can hold a weapon. And I can reload like that, and I can reload this guy if he was my rifle. And then I can just click anywhere in the playfield and I can move them to that area. So I get a little um, cursor, a 3D cursor I call it. And they move a bit weird because they're, the, they're kind of using the code that's borrowed from Project Charlie, but they do get to where they want to go. And they're using the Havoc AI system to navigate the way around these obstacles that I've placed for them. So they'll quite happily run around in this little play area. I think they're picking random speeds actually, which is why sometimes they're going fast and slow. But they do get to where they want to go. If you click over here, camera's obviously following just one of the people and the other guys run off the screen. So um, what you can do then is, uh, if I can click on an enemy there, these guys will run over there and uh, they'll attack him, or they should do anyway. These balls here represent enemies, obviously there's no finished graphics again. So as soon as you start attacking somebody, you get a little health bar, it'll start coming up. I'll reload that guy's rockets. And it's kind of a Halo style health system where everything regenerates. That guy's been knocked off. Uh, there's another guy over here, let's go attack him. So when you kill somebody XP, a little bit of coin pops out and you get a bit of XP and that gets added up down there. So, and I'm getting these, just printing these debug tracer lines, which, um, just showing where the bullets are going. They're not actually, f the characters aren't actually facing in the correct direction properly. They're not turning to face the enemy properly. That's not coded in. So, I've got to reload for them. That's the one thing they don't do for you. You've got to do your own reloading. And there you go, all letting hell loose on it. So, he's being knocked about all over the place. Let's see if they get around to it. This guy here, this little one as well, is supposed to be a um, friendly player. He's on the same side as these guys, that's why he's not attacking. So they're not having, they're not having much luck at, uh, getting to him, but they are probably will get around to kill him. It's because I'm forgetting to reload. Really there you go, health's trickling down. Got you. And now out pops a temporary graphic coin, and it gets 30 XP for that, and that gets added up down there. Well, this guy'd run out of rockets as well, so... Oh, that's a bug actually. He's clicking reload and he's not. He can't reload, he's got no rockets. It's probably going to have infinite ammo when it's finished actually, but I decided to code in having finite ammo because um, I thought it'd be easier to code that in and then have it as an infinite ammo option basically. So these guys can just walk around. We've also got a mini map and the Y arrows are the characters or your friendly characters. As you can see, that guy is being represented by. He's kind of a friendly, he's marked in white. These blue icons are objectives. The objectives might be to destroy something or get to a certain place or something like that. And the red icons, which have all gone now, were actually um, enemies, but I've just killed them all. So that's kind of the premise, is that you control the two characters. Uh, they kind of run around and they shoot at stuff, but you don't really do the shooting. It does it, it, does it for you. And I don't know if you noticed before, but um, they were actually... They weren't such a good shot, and there was a reason for that. It's because it's actually been uh, the weapons have actually been programmed in to have a level of inaccuracy, which you'll be able to upgrade by trading in your XP for upgrades on the weapons, basically. So the pistol's like pretty inaccurate, as you can see. He's got a pretty poor shot with it. Which you might think, well, that's a little bit annoying because I'm in direct control. Of it, but Eventually you'll be able to trade this XP in for the ability to actually have a better shot, fire faster and stuff like that. And that's actually all in the game currently. Um, so you'll be able to get your XP. Let me just uh, 
cheat, give myself some XP. That's 20,000 XP, I got me to level 5. 20,000 XP, and you'll be able to pause the game, and you've got this upgrade weapons section. So this is actually using the built-in GUI stuff, which I've created like quite a few custom controls to do some of this, so uh, I would have liked to have done just with the basic controls, but it wasn't really possible somewhere. So you can pick one of these four weapons, these are the four that I've programmed in at the moment. And let's say I pick the pistol, and you've got all these levels of upgrade ability for the weapon. And these are actually all working in the game, so I've got... There's actually more than that, but these are just the ones that I want the player to be able to upgrade. So you want to do more damage, and you can trade some of your XP for that. Uh, you, you don't want to get in too close, that's another one. So if I put the accuracy up to full, then depending on the weapon, how it's set up, that might be spot on accurate, or it might just be more accurate. And I can show you how these are set up in script in a bit. So you can trade in all your upgrade or your XP, apply your changes. And at the moment that doesn't actually um, change it straight away. But um, it will actually, let me just load the scene. When I reload the scene, it will have applied those upgrades. So pistol's holding eight bullets now it reloaded a bit quicker and it should be a lot more accurate so if I click on one of these guys up here he won't fire unless he's got a line of sight either so that's why he's not firing anymore. So, oh, there you go he's doing a lot more damage and he's pretty much spot on accurate now he needs to reload oh, yeah, there you go so he's doing a lot better now. So that's the whole premise of the game, is that you're going to be able to get to a higher level to unlock the weapons and then get the XP to upgrade how the weapons work. And there'll also be gameplay elements of places you've got to get to, things you've got to destroy, things like that, people you've got to find. So, um, and you've got to reload yourself, otherwise they won't do it. They just stand there doing nothing like what you're doing. So the AI is built on a behavior tree system and uh, I can put a link in this video of the example of how you implement that kind of thing but there's a, there's a whole implementation of that of what do we do, how close do we get, when do we fire, when do we just, when do we run away, I don't think there's any running away in it, there could be. And it's all like configurable via uh, Lua script which has been extended, the actual C++ that I've written has been extended so you can actually configure it all through script which is probably a very good idea anyway because in the last game I did, because um, I'm doing a lot of the game in C++, I, it gets to the point where you just think, well, why bother scripting this? I'm already doing C++, so let's just write some more C++. And that's great. It's really fast. It works really well until like, you come to the part where you're at the end of the game, and the end of the game is basically just tweaking stuff and tweaking gameplay and making things work differently. And at that point, when you've got to change everything in the C++, it becomes just a constant, like, change this, rebuild, reload, change this, rebuild, reload. And it can take days to just, you know, tune the gameplay to the way you want. But when you've got that in script, and you can just tweak a value and click play, um, you know, it, or, or just reload the scene w without having to do anything, it's just a lot quicker to actually make the gameplay work the way you want to do. So, um with this game in particular, although there's a lot of C++, I've extended a lot of it uh, via Swig into Lua so that I can use everything that I've written in C++, a lot of it I can use um, in Lua and I can get all the flexibility of that plus all the speed of the C++ and everything. So I want to be able to do everything with both systems and I, and I think it is really where there is a lot of power with this engine is that you can extend that scripting system and, and give the power to the scripting engine or whatever without having to compromise um, being able to write stuff in C++. And uh, so we can have a look at that in here. So I've, I've got, it, it looks like a lot of work that there's a lot of this, these swig extensions to extend the actual um, C++ that I've written, but they are just header files with the protected and private parts ripped out. So there's only like a couple of things in that one. And this is for the AI, and there's a also like the minimap. I can set the marker appearance of the minimap and set the background texture all through Lua because the minimap's written in C++, but it's all configured in Lua. So what have I got? So I've written some 2D stuff for the um, 
to do that overlay, the mini map, all those indicator bars that you saw, health bars, and the GUI extensions are in there. I've written a couple of actions to cheat and reload the scene. Uh, there's quite a few components that I've written to do the Havoc AI stuff. There is a, I think there is a few things missing from the Havoc AI in terms of the integration, which you'll find that the RPG components have written a few things, but I've written the path following behavior component and a character component. I've also got that damage component, which is quite a big thing, which is the thing that accounts for all the health. So you just stick one of those on the character and then he has it. He has a basically a Halo style recharging health system and that'll be used for the players and the enemies. I've got objective components. Uh, I've got Havoc Phantom that I wrote. What else have I got? And the sensor, that's a Havoc um, Phantom for the sensor as well. Uh, some stuff to read strings, uh, which is also extended into Lua. Um, quite a few entities, uh, weapons, I've got projectile weapons and hit scan weapons, the pickups, there's probably going to be more of those, 3D cursor, but that's all I need for right now. Uh, the game stuff's got a game settings, that's quite important, that's got stuff that I built in right from the start to make sure that I could tweak the gameplay later, later on, again via script, in that if later on I decide, oh, the explosions are all too rubbish, I can just scale up how big the explosions are or how much damage they do. And if the minimap's got the wrong size, I can just scale that up. So that's all just one place to scale all the settings for the game. Like, I can give the player much more damage resistance, and I can give everyone much more health if the game's, like, not playing correctly. So it's all about... I've written some code now that allows me to tweak later on. Um, and, like do lots of iterations on the actual gameplay, hopefully. Uh, again, there's all my Lua extensions. Looks like a lot of work, but it's really not. It's well worth doing if you are using this engine, is extend the stuff you've written in C++ and give the power to the actual scripting engine, if it's something that needs to be. And uh, some Raycast results for the physics. I've written a sound manager that allows me to control the music and sound effects independently and there's all my weapon stuff for the upgrades and you know how much they do of each one but essentially I've, de I've defined all this stuff in C++ um, but I actually use it all from Lua script so here's all my here's my like initial like scene script and what I'm doing here is I'm getting my game settings class which I've extended from Lua and I'm able to set all these factors for, you know, how much damage is everything going to do. So I can double the damage of everything in the game just by doing that. I don't have to reload, uh, re recompile, I don't have to do anything. I can just click play and I've got a new version of the game there. Uh, I can set how much XP everyone gets, but I can double that. I've got a grenade count in there, but there's actually no grenades in the game yet. There's my infinite ammo flag. So I'm, do I'm doing a lot of setup there in Lua. And I can tweak all those without having to go and recompile the game. Or a gameplay designer could do that if they were working on it. Also got uh, tweaking those for the difficulty settings. I've encoded four difficulty settings and then changing some of those values to create the difficulty settings. Um, there's my mini-map. So again, um, there's my, I'm getting the mini-map that I've extended from C++ and I'm setting it up in here, I'm setting up what it looks like, how big it is, where it's going to be. So the mini-map itself is defined in C++ but how it looks and where it is on the screen is defined in the script. And that's some, just some stuff for the UI. And then here's the weapons. So again the weapons, the actual structure is defined in C++ but how the weapons work and what the gameplay is like is all defined here. So things like this will get me the uh, the weapon managers there. I get my weapon manager as a single instance of that, and then I get my weapon. So I've got my pistol weapon there. I can get an access to the pointer to that, and I can set that. For instance, this one has a um, a minimum of thirty ammo, and maximum of thirty. So you start with thirty, you'll go up to forty. The magazine size starts at six, and we'll go up to twelve depending on how you've upgraded it. Um, the reload rate, so it's half a second to reload at its fastest and it's one second to reload at its slowest and so on and so on, so you just define that for that weapon and then the machine gun there which hasn't been finished as you can see, it's not got much, much going on 
and the rocket launch has got a few things there so that will define again fire limits reload rate limits so that can be different for everyone and it's all configured from the actual script itself so actually iterating over the gameplay and getting those things right at the end where you do you're basically going to be doing thousands of tweaks um, that's going to be something that's going to be a lot easier to do than it was on the last game where I was going to have to recompile the game every time something didn't work correctly um, but that's that really so that's the actual scene in VForge and as you can see that's the um, the actual AI nav mesh that they're using to navigate around this little test scene and there's obviously lots of other little things. I've got a few exploding barrels that I've put in. These are just test XP drops and stuff like that. Um, but that's basically it. So um, the only thing about this is there's no graphics. So um, this is something I'm going to need. I'm going to need people to work on the actual graphics. It's going to need characters. Like I, obviously, these are the only actual things that even resemble finished graphics in the game. And these are just borrow graphics, these guys can't hold weapons or anything like that, so obviously there's no finished graphics here, there's no scenery, there's no characters, there's no weapons, there's no pickups, um, I, there's no lighting been done even on this because it's not even worth bothering with. But um, if anyone's out there who wants to work on some graphics for this, if anyone's a character animator or anything like that, um, that's what I need for this game. As you can see I've got the kind of gameplay and the programming handled, but um, I don't have anyone to work on the actual making this look like a game and this is all currently working on Android at the moment as well so um, that's something that's going to be released on first obviously um, and is there anything else I can show you in the scripting area so there's just various scripts for things there's the there's the, I've got some callbacks as well to lure oh no actually that's a um, that is a Havoc callback, but I've got some of my own callbacks for certain things. Um, that just moves the rocket, but basically th there's a lot of uh, that you can do in the script for this without really compromising um, any of the kind of speed of the game. A lot of it's to set up and tweaking and stuff like that. So uh, that's the lot. Oh, and I'm also using uh, Google Test to do some unit testing on some of the C++ where possible, but it's not always possible because I've found like there's some stuff that like loads things from the disk and they I just can't seem to unit test those. So I've got some AI stuff going on there and a few other things, but that's been quite helpful, the Google test stuff. So that's a lot. I hope you enjoyed that and uh, hopefully I'll post another video uh, with some more updates when some more stuff's been done to this.